unique about the property. Sorry. Yeah. So I always try to find something unique about the property. And, you know, towards the end when the client is, you know, tends to be leaving, I kind of just ask them about, you know, that unique thing. Hey, did you realize it had a, you know, a tankless water heater? And it just starts, you know, something easy to kind of start that conversation. And then I kind of just circle back and I start asking, well, you know, how long have you been looking? And just kind of, you know, some, some basic questions. But I always try to, I because in the beginning, I feel when they come in, they're used to people just like attacking them. So I kind of just greet them and say, hey, enjoy the house, take a look at it. And, and then I always, you know, have one thing that I kind of want to talk on or bring up to them. And then I, I use that towards the end just to kind of ease into having that conversation. Yeah. Um, to, to add to that, um, because I, I used to do an open house, open houses before the whole COVID thing. Um, <clears throat> just like Jason was saying, you know, like, you know, pick a few things, but let them, let them look around first. Like, go ahead and take a look. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, and also if you guys want to see any of their homes, let me know, because we do have a few other homes that we're not showcasing now, but I can give you a private tour. Um, if you guys have the time, so go ahead and take a look, uh, come back to me and just let me know what you guys are looking for. And I'll see what I can do for you guys. Um, and that kind of just starts of, you know, building a little relationship here and there, but it's been so long since I've done that. So, yeah. Yeah. I like, uh, I remember the other strategy too, is just having, um, your computer up and pulling up the other homes that are available in the area. Um, you know, like it's, it's like, kind of like when you go to, you know, to the shoe store, right. You go in, you look at a pair of shoes. If you don't like the shoes, the shoe, the shoe man, he's going to go bring out four or five other pairs of shoes for you. They're always trying to give you options, you know? So uh, a lot of times buyers will see the photos of a property or a price and they'll be enticed. So they show up to the house and then they see the house and it's not what they were expecting. Right. Or the photos mean, you know, look a lot better than what it looks like in person. So I think it's good to just be a resource and, um, and have other properties available or maybe off markets or something that you can show them some sort of list of, of value. Um, and you can say, Hey, I have these other ones available or, Hey, what are you guys looking for? Did you see this one on main street? Um, cause I think when you're at an open house, the, the buyers that walk into an open house, there's a very, very, very slim chance that they're going to either offer on that house or that they're going to either get that house. Right it's, it's really, uh, especially if there's multiple offers, right? So I think in our mind, we already got to go into it thinking like, I got to bring them other properties. I got to have other options for them. Um, instead of just trying to sell this particular property that I'm at, it's not, you're not necessarily selling the property that you're at. You're, you're trying to build that relationship. Yeah. I think that's a great strategy, Enrique, especially if your open house isn't as busy, right? In the beginning, it seems like like Amy just said, she had six, you know, six groups. So if you spread that over, you know, the four hours or three hours of the open house, you can actually spend some time and be prepared and kind of show that. So I think, no, I think that's a great strategy. Yeah. It's difficult um, to do that, Enrique, when there's like, when you're getting 50 groups in, right? To yeah. To kind of find those one or two, just, you know, actually bring that up. Yeah. No, that's true. I, I think what, what Andy C was saying in that video was uh, he basically, you know, shows them the house or answers questions. And then at the end, he just goes in for an appointment. Hey, do you guys want to set a time to come in my office and go over disclosures and talk about writing an offer? Like he just goes straight for the, the kill. Um, which I guess at that point, you only have a small window of opportunity, right? Like before they, they take off. You know, so it's, it's something to consider as well. Do we just go in for that appointment right away? Like say, hey, do you guys want, this property most likely is gonna get a bunch of offers. Do you wanna, you know, I'm done here at four. Do you wanna meet at my office at, at five, you know, or jump on a Zoom call at 4.30, you know, and talk about this property and, and what it's gonna take to get this property. I mean, what do you got, what do you, what do you have to lose at that point? Not much. Uh, good stuff. I mean, we got a few people on here. Let's let's get this keep this rolling. Um, questions, guys. What's what's on your mind today? What sort of questions do you have? Uh, what do you need some coaching on? So, just kind of a question on whether there's internet access. I guess we want to make sure there's internet access on these open homes because you know if it's vacant, there's no internet access. But when you do open up your computer, is it on KV Core that you're showing 
them the listings? Like what site are you using? Are you just going to MLS? Um, yeah, I, I don't use KV Core. So we have our own CRM that we've been using for a while. So we haven't went to KV Core through, through EXP, but I'm assuming it could be on KV Core, just as long as you're able to pull up that IDX and pull all that stuff up. I mean, at the very worst case scenario, you pull up Zillow or you pull up Redfin and you pull up a list of properties that are similar in that area. I think that really doesn't matter as long as you can show them. So whether it's MLS, KV Core, Redfin, any of those, just show them like, hey, this is what else is available. Um, yeah. I, unless, I you, do that. Sorry, go ahead. unless you have like specific properties that are off market or like your own specific list that, you know, that maybe you want to print that out or something and have that available or have it saved on your computer already. What were you saying, Marty? Yeah, no, usually. Um, so I usually just use the MLS. Um, that's what I used to use all the time. And then when there is no Wi-Fi, I just pull up my hotspot on my phone and just run it through that. Because I have run into that and I'm like, just let me just pull up my my hotspot um, and just connect it like there. And, and it's, it's usually good. Yeah. Um, it's it's part of it is also just, just being prepared, right? Like it's not stuff you want to do on the fly. You want to have this all ready to go the night before or a few hours before. I, I really think the open house starts hours before the open house, right? From like strategically, when do you put out your signs, right? Like you wanna put as many signs as possible and you wanna have those signs out hours, if not the night before, you know, the open house. Because you're, you're trying to build that, you know, anticipation. Um, what some agents would do is the open house would be at one and it'd be, you know, 1230 or 1245 and they're putting their signs out, you know? So that, if you think if, if the signs are meant to pick up drive-by traffic, you know, <laughs> or people that live in the neighborhood, like those signs should be out a long time ago, right? Way before that. What, what I used to do at a uh, open house to keep people there is um, I used to have like a big whiteboard and I would pull up like the MLS stats on one piece of paper. And then I would have like the um, comps for that specific house on one piece of paper right and uh, a hot sheet of like the market just so they're just standing there and kind of reading through and you have something else to talk about and provide extra value rather than just showing them the specific house because it wasn't my listing that I was doing listings for right? I mean open houses for so um just add like more value is what what brought me a lot of success and I closed that was my bread and butter for open houses so I'm I'm planning to to milk that as much as I can this year when it comes back yeah, let's that, I think that's a good point you bring up, Emmanuel. Let's dissect that a little bit. Um, think about it. You're a stranger. You walk into an open house. You meet this agent who's all dressed up and, you know, bubbly or whatever. Like, what would you be, like, you as a consumer, let's put yourself in the buyer's shoes. What would impress you and what would be valuable for you from that agent? Right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I put uh, you two together because I'm the type of person that wants to learn, like, about something that I've, I haven't learned about before, right? And I, I thought, you know, maybe learn more about like the market in general. A lot of these buyers, they were just neighbors or like first time coming by, you know? Um, <laughs> always like give them something extra, you know? Yeah. So like to me, what would be important as a buyer would be, you know, obviously the comps, like what else is selling in the neighborhood, either what's active, pending, sold. So doing some sort of CMA on that property. Um, to give to get an idea of, of what a good price would be, you know, offer price or, or where this property is going to go. Um, I think knowing like some important facts about the neighborhood, like maybe the schools, the upcoming developments, the new properties that are being built down the street, that new shopping center that just went up, um, stuff like that, crime rates, you know, things of that sort. To me, all that would be extremely valuable. Um, and then that particular property, right? Like stuff about that particular property, like a permit history, you know, there's, we, we use a uh, Cress um, for our E&O and they have a permit report that we can pull up. So a permit history. Um, I saw one, a really good open house where they had like this binder and they had a whole uh, uh, FAQ sheet on the property. So all the questions that people would ask, like, is that back unit permitted? When was the remodel done? When was the furnace, you know, update or serviced? Or when was the water heater replaced? Like all those important questions, they were all on a on an FAQ sheet. 
Um, and they were all laid out right there. So when they walked up, um, all the questions were answered. How much is the HOA? What does it include, right? Like all the common questions that a buyers are gonna ask for, um, you have that stuff prepared up front. And here's why, right? There's a lot of times that buyers are also sellers, right? They need to sell a property or they live in the neighborhood and they're thinking about selling and they're just checking out the open house to see kind of what that house looks like compared to theirs. So um, it's not just like, hey, are the buyers gonna come buy this property? It's that buyer may be a potential seller, um, you know, or they may just have stopped buying a neighborhood and they're just barely getting started with the process of, of thinking about buying and they may want to go look in a whole nother neighborhood, but if they see that you have all these tools and resources, that immediately is going to elevate you above any other agent because most open houses aren't, aren't being done like that. You know, I remember going to, go ahead. Oh, you're on mute, I think. You're muted. Uh, something happened. I can't hear you. Maybe your ear pods. But how many times have you guys ever walked into an open house and it's just like a black and white little uh, yeah. sheet? Hello? There you go. Okay. You don't pay me a single thing. Yeah, I always saw it as like an opportunity to just show each client like you what you can do, you especially if a seller property. walks in Nothing. and your open house is just, you know, you like there's a lot of people person. and you're you're kind of entertaining and you're showcasing the house. It's an opportunity to show them what you can do for them. Right. Yeah. I've had list. I had a listing appointment one time in the open house because he liked how like my energy and things like that. So it was dead. But he just so happened to be a neighbor that came in and we just sat down and just walked through like how we would sell the home and things like that. Um, and yeah. So what about a. Uh, okay. What was that? You I said, what about I've never <laughs> You got to mute yourself, bro. My bad. We're sitting right next to each other. Uh, is it, what do you, do you guys think it would be like a deterrent or a turnoff if we have inspections printed out for the, for the potential buyers to see already, or, or would it be more of a benefit to them? You know, just obviously they, they can have their agent or if we end up representing them, we can pull that up for them, but having that available when they walk in, if, the, if they are available, right? Um, what do well, you guys I think about that? I think it depends what the inspections say, right? If they're really good inspections, yeah, it's yeah. Really clean, then I would want to showcase that. But if the inspections are like horrible and the house is falling apart and the termites are holding hands, right? Like you may not, you may not want to, you may not want to have that on display um, and only send that, you know, to serious candidates, you know? So. Yeah. And the um, other thing too, Enrique, not to cut you off, but the thing is with the inspections, that's a great opportunity to set that appointment. Right. To say, hey, Emmanuel, you know what? I, you know, we, I'm going to go ahead and get the inspections ready. Let's go ahead and meet at my office so we can go over them in detail. Right. So that's another thing that we can hold close, because, again, we I don't I want it, my inspections. I want to share those with my clients, my buyers so I can show value. Right. And correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you guys, you guys are more, you know, with, with you know, do, on the real estate side, I'm more on the lending. But for me, I look at it as that that's something special. So for, for you guys to, for me to, if you want to see this, you need to meet with me. We're going to meet in my office. We're going to meet at a Starbucks. I'm going to go into detail with the disclosures, with the inspections, right? Yeah. So, so, and again, because if they have their own agent, the agent has ac access to those inspections and that's going to be his role is to go over and, 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 and disclose and, and go over the inspections. Yep. No, I think I another good one uh, would be, uh, if we have, if we're showing a house, if we're at an open house that uh, doesn't have all of the bells and whistles, like the kitchen isn't updated, the bathrooms aren't updated, having a um, having quotes ready from a contractor that shows them, hey, like you know, I know, I know you guys probably want a new kitchen. This is what it's going to cost you. I know you guys are probably looking at those bathrooms. This is what it's going to cost you. That landscaping in the backyard. This is what it'll cost you. Um, you have a pretty big lot here, you know, we have a, you know, a layout of what an ADU would look like and, and, and what that would cost you. I don't know, just providing all that extra, that might be going too far already. I don't know, but I think that would be some pretty good, valuable information to give people. That, no, that's, that's actually a really good idea. I never thought about that. Um, because think about it. If, 
even if they don't end up buying that property, but they see that you were able to provide them with all that information. Cause that's what a lot of buyers ask, right? Like, Hey, you know, what does it cost to replace the countertops? What does it cost to redo the floors or the bathroom? That's a question we get all the time when we go show homes, right? So if we have that information yep. already there to give them an idea on that property, and then you say, Hey, look at, if you don't like this property, I can do this same thing for you on another one. Any other property we go look at, I can give you a good idea of, of what it would take to customize it. I think that's a huge, huge uh, value. I don't, I've, I've never seen anyone do that. Um, so. Another thing, just going kind of circling back to the preparation. I, I think it's important. This is an opportunity for us to door knock that, that area. Right. So again, going back to what Enrique is saying, in the sense of, you know, showing up, you know, showing up an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes prior to your actually, your actual open house, because you have your signs out already, and then you come back, prep the property, and then you take a quick, you know, 40 minute walk around the neighborhood, just letting them know what's going on. Because again, that's an opportunity for you not, not to get buyers, but more to get, get a listing, right, yeah. or get an opportunity. Yeah, that's a great point. And we got to think about it this way, right? Um, open houses, the benefit of an open house, I think as a marketing strategy is that it's low cost, right? It doesn't really cost you much to do an open house as far as dollars, right? So it's not like you're having to pay, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars to, to put on an open house. What you're really paying for is your time, right? The, the time you're going to spend the three hours at the open house, the few hours of prep. So if I'm going to dedicate, you know, six hours to this event, right? The three hours of the actual open house, the hour before, the hour after cleaning up, I want to go in there and I want to maximize those six hours and create as much opportunity as possible, right? So like Jason said, door knocking ahead of time, putting your signs out ahead of time, having all those fact sheets ready to go, all that stuff, making the open house like a showcase uh, for not only buyers, but potential sellers, right? So that you get the most, you squeeze the lemon, basically, you get the most juice out of that, that event as possible. And then after the open house, that's when the work starts, right? Because if you had a bunch of people come to the open house, and you couldn't talk to everyone, I would stay at the property and start calling everyone that just left your open house, because they they're still in, in uh, shopping mode, right? If, they, if they've been touring open houses, you know, from one to three or, or whatever, one to four, they might be on their way home when you call them. They might have looked at other properties. Um, what most agents do is they'll wait till Monday to call their people, to call the leads. And what happens on Monday? You're back at work, right? You're back at work. You're back taking the kids to school. You're back in meetings. You're not in shopping mode. So if you could connect with them right there on the spot, like right when they're in that mode, I think that's your greatest opportunity to book an appointment or, or to take this conversation further. Yeah, no, no, definitely sending a text message, a phone call and thinking as if you did all this work for the open house. Now, the biggest part is now you got your pot of leads. Now, how are we going to maximize and go after those leads? We just don't pack up and go home and wait till Monday. Immediately, you're going to want to call, text and email them immediately. Um, uh, one other thing that I would do in the open house, because sometimes we would get a lot of like, um, I want to say fake numbers or bad emails. So what I would do is I would personally go up to them. And I'm, again, guys, we haven't done open house for a while. So I'm just kind of remember what we would do. I would go talk to the client and immediately say, hey, let me go ahead and let me go ahead and Enrique, let me give you my V card. Let me go ahead and send you my V card right now. Right. And at that time, well, I would need his, their phone number to get their their v-card so i immediately would gather their correct information and text on my v-card right there so i know that was that's a good lead because i built some type of rapport and i directly got their information right because if i'm at an open house i'm not there just to open the door and, and give out water i want to make sure that i am getting some opportunity on, on either the purchase side or the selling side right so again i think that's important Another Enrique, you probably have a sheet in our in our Google Drive. That's an open house protocol. It may need to be updated, but I know we have something, right? I do. Uh, one I other do. thing is doing a video in front of the house before the open house, right? Doing a video introducing, saying, "Hey, look, I'll be at this house. Come check it out. Come visit me." 
it's important to do as well. Yeah, uh, that's what that's another another pointer right there, right? Is now how do we maximize this thing online, not just offline, right? Because remember, you, you, the open house is a good opportunity to showcase to your friends and your followers on what you're doing as well and how well you're prepared for the open house. So that's a great point as well is, is doing a Facebook live, Instagram live, whatever, and uh, introducing the property, showing them what you're about to do, telling them about it, showing them all the stuff you have set up, inviting people to come on by. We've had people stop by like, hey, we're in the area. We got drinks and stuff like that. Come on by. And people will stop by just to say what's up. But then that gets the conversation flowing or you get a referral out of that. You know, it's just another value add, guys. So it's we're just now we're now we're getting the wheels turning of like how do we maximize this whole entire event if I'm gonna go spend my hours there? And I, I think the big takeaway, guys, is if if you're not gonna do that, if you're not gonna run your open house like that, you might as well not do open house. You might as well spend that time of two hours of solid prospecting, calling all the leads that you have in your database, right? From the comfort of your home or or the office. Yeah, I agree, Enrique. I think an open house is a great opportunity for us to perform. So, you know, maximize that performance so that we can get some opportunities. So definitely don't take it lightly. Because again, when I look at open houses, these are boots on the ground. These are people that have put on their shoes, have dr drove to the property and, you know, are knocking on their coming in. So to me, that's probably a hotter lead than some of the ones that we are even getting that inquire online because these people have taken the time to go ahead and, you know, drive to that, to that property. Yeah. Well, good stuff. Um, now let's talk about, let's talk about the other X factor, right? These are all the things you should do, but let's talk about like on an ind individual basis, like what kind of personality should you be portraying? I think a big part of the open house and connecting with people is the energy that you bring, right? because you can have two people who do the exact same protocol, all the steps we just talked about, and they're gonna get a different result, right? Because the X factor is you. It's what do you bring to the table personally? How do you show up? What kind of energy do you have? Are you making people feel comfortable? Are you making them laugh? Are you breaking the ice? Are you talking to their kids? Are you shaking hands and kissing babies, right? Like all those things, that's the difference between like a successful open house and just a boring one, right? Like where people don't remember anything. Um, because I've, I'm going to say it's safe to say that someone can walk into an open house. They hate the property, but they love the agent because that agent was freaking funny. He was smart. He gave value. He made them feel good. Right. And they're like, man, I could see myself working with this guy. Maybe it's not this house. This house doesn't match fit our needs. You can't, you don't have control over if it fits their needs or not, but you do have control over how you make them feel, right? So I think that's the other thing that it's, it's extremely important to point out is that energy, you need, to, you need to come through. Like Jason said, you're there to perform. You know, if you're just like, hey, go ahead, walk around. Let me know if you need anything. I've seen agents do, I've been to open houses, right? Um, I've seen agents do that where they don't give you anything. They don't talk to you. They're basically just there killing time. It's almost like someone paid them to hold the door open and they're not really putting any effort into it, right? So you're wasting your time, guys, if, if, if we're doing that. Um, open houses, like it, it's, it's work, right? If you wanna have a successful open house, it does, it does take work and it does take a lot of effort. Uh, I have a question, <clears throat> something yeah. I used to run into a lot, and it was hard for me to kind of navigate how to work that out. Um, so I kind of just like, um, just like uh, freestyle it. But um, when they come in and say, oh, yeah, I already have an agent. What do you usually do? Or like, how do you, you, you just let them go? Or do you try to get that business anyway? Um, that's a good question. I think you got to be tactful on, on how you navigate around that. Um, I think if they already have an agent, I think the worst thing you can do is say, well, do you want to work with me if I can, whatever? Because someone doesn't work with an agent until they've gained value from an agent, right? Like if they don't see a value, if your value is just like, hey, do you want to work with me if I could get you a deal? Then you're just being really transactional, I think. So I would say, hey, totally respect that. Who's your agent? I might know him, right? Okay. 
Um, and then what I would do is I would continue to deliver value. I would continue to showcase my personality. I would continue to show them around the property. I would continue to show them the fact sheets. I would show them instead of tell them, right? Mm -hmm. And then at the very end, then that's when you, you go in for like, hey, I know you guys said you're working with someone. I'm not sure if you're, you know, 100% committed or if you're keeping your options open. Uh, you know, would you mind if I, if I called you and maybe show you kind of, you know, some, some other avenues of, of how we can give you uh, an advantage in this market. Okay. At that point, once they've seen you kind of perform, then it's going to be a lot easier for them to say yes. Got it. Got it. You know, so I don't know that I, I think you got to build that value first and that credibility and get into rapport with someone before you try to go in there and ask them if they want to, you know, still chat with you. Okay, cool. Thank you problem questions questions open houses what else have you guys seen out there any cool ideas around open houses what's uh because i'm uh i'm a COVID agent so i don't know what open houses are um <laughs> what's the dress code <laughs> you want to be nonchalant uh, yeah. at an open house or you want to dress up or what what's you know what i mean post COVID dress code <laughs> i think uh the question is, it's not what's the dress code is how do you want people to perceive you? Right. So, um, and also what's appropriate maybe for that property, you know, if you're selling a, you know, a luxury home, you're not wearing a hat, you know, unless that's your brand and that's how you represent yourself. So I think it's, there's that fine line of, yeah, you want to be who you are, but you still want to maintain some professionalism. Um, I'm more of a laid back person. So I might wear, a blazer with a t-shirt and some designer sneakers, you know, but it's kind of like still kind of business casual, still nice, but still a little my style, something like that. Um, you might be just the button up short sleeve guy, which is cool. That still looks clean, you know, that, but I think you definitely need to be aware that you're making a first impression on people, you know, and, and use your judgment. Um, whatever you do wear, um, whether it's more dressed up or a little more laid back, I think it needs to be clean. It needs to be ironed and you need to smell good. All the senses need to come in, right? You need to have combed your hair that day. It's, it's all the senses, right? Uh, make sure you took a shower, make sure you didn't just go to the gym and then come to an open house. Like it's all those things, right? Yeah, no, no, I agree. I mean, even, and be prepared, right? I mean, if you're going to be running around, putting out signs, you know, in, in the summertime, you may need an extra shirt, right? I've done this years ago where I would, you know, have my open house shirt. After I'm done putting it on, I'd be, then I'd, you know, put on a new shirt, the order, you know, get all ready for that open house. So just, I think just being prepared, again, going back to the, I, I, I think it's basic, but it's good that we're having this conversation because we haven't done it for a while, right? So, so it's important to understand, you know, there's basic hygiene, which I expect, you know, if we're agents, we have. But again, being prepared, like you're like, oh man, I didn't realize I'm gonna be running around putting up 30 signs and now I need a new shirt. So making sure you have that, I think is important. Um, but yeah, I you think- mean, uh, You mean you don't wanna shake their hand, and have, you don't wanna shake their hand and have the pit stains going on? Like, <laughs> you, you know, yeah, you know, what's funny guys is that Enrique and I, we are in the business where, you know, we were always wearing a tie in the beginning, right? I mean, I, you know, and so now it's, it definitely has transitioned. Our clientele is a little bit more Relax, techie. So again, I think it's you know be professional, but still bring your character, your style to it, and, and know know your audience. Have an idea of who your audience is going to be, uh, because again, I don't think you should be overly dressed, and and you might make someone feel uncomfortable. I mean, I, you know, and they're like, and and then it may not be you either, right? I mean, I've never seen Hervin in a suit and tie. And, you know, unless you're going to maybe like a wedding, right? So it's, <laughs> I would say, yeah, just be you, yeah. but be professional. Good advice. Good advice. Good Amy, stuff, you guys. Amy, you getting some nuggets out of this? I don't know if she's still there. What other questions around uh, open houses? I think definitely, Enrique, since this is coming up for us, we definitely need, I think we just need to update. I know we have a protocol. Cause we we've done this before. Um, and now, you know, it's been a year, so definitely making sure that we have that protocol ready and we can do some training on it. Cause I'm expecting us to do some open houses either this week or next week for our team. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
what one thing I wanted to bring up, I don't remember where I heard this. It might have actually been on this um on this um, mastermind was um I heard someone say that they would do like a full day of open house and they would just uh, make shifts for different people, right? Like so there was like a morning shift, like an afternoon shift and like the, the twilight shift, or the evening shift, evening shift. Um, and they just had like an all day open house type of thing. So they could get as many people there as possible because, um, and one thing why, why I thought that was really good is because I remember like when I would do open houses, I would shut down maybe around five o'clock and people would always show up when I'm like shutting it down like 5, 10, 5, 15, I'd say there till like six thirty or something. Um, so I don't know if, if if this was brought up um, on our last mastermind, but I remember someone speaking up like a whole day open house and just uh, switching ships. Yeah, I think uh, Kenny brought that up. Is they were they were thinking of the open house like musical chairs where you kind of have different people coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And um, the advantage to that was going to be that if someone let's say if, if you have someone who's interested right now, or maybe someone who's thinking about selling and they're, they're a couple houses down, you can say, Hey, well, my shift ends, you know, at one o'clock, can I stop by for 15 minutes and just come check out your property and give you a couple pointers on, on maybe what you can do to prepare for your sale. Um, so I think that's, that's also, now we're talking about how do we milk this open house, right? Like right, right. do we do a, a six hour open house and we have, we split it into two shifts of three or, three shifts of two hours. Um, and then remember guys, people are finding out by open houses mainly through the internet, right? So that open house needs to be posted like already in advance, right? You wanna post that open house on the MLS, you know, the week before or a few days before so that when people are searching and kind of planning out their weekend, they already see, okay, Saturday, this property is open all day. It's open from 11 to five, you know, that's a six hour window. And then you line up, you know, your agents who are going to take the shifts, um, you know, so it's that exposure on the market to kind of prepare for the open house. Now the signs do work, right? The signs work for the neighborhood, I think, right? I think the more people in the neighborhood that see your signs, you're going to get like those neighbors and stuff like that. You'll probably get a few people who are driving by the area, but it's mainly going to be for that immediate neighborhood to get exposure to them. And the, the most of the buyers they're if they're going to open houses that day, they're probably going all different neighborhoods, different open houses. Right. So they've already have it mapped out. Um, so, yeah, that's a great point is, is making it longer and, and really maximizing it. Um, just for that, we got a few more minutes, guys, but I, I want to talk about, um, you know, this is a good segment, guys. This is be a whole episode on, on open houses, but let's talk about like the conversation. What kind of, what kind of scripting, right? Like what kind of conversation should you be having with the people who come into the open house, right? What kind of questions should you be asking? Um, what do you think, Alfredo? I think, uh, I think it should be tailored similar to like what we would ask them over the phone, like the LP mama. Right. But just, uh, you know, reposition it because you're talking to somebody live, but, you know, getting, getting a feel for them. Um, if they, if they already don't have an agent or even if they do, right. Just running through the LP mama script with them real quick. Uh, and even touching base on the, on the DIC, right. If you really, if you really feel like they're like, this is the house for them or if they're really interested, um, you know, just to feel them out. And then you can already have that, to upload into your CRM later, um, you know, to, to just like multi-touch them down the road because they're there for a reason. They're a buyer, right? They want to buy, may, like you mentioned earlier, it might not be the house for them, but, uh, but at least you have all that firing power for when you're making that call, um, you know, the next time. Yeah. And for those that don't know what the LP mama is and the DIC, can you go ahead and uh, um, explain what those are? Yeah, so it's just like a structure, like a format that we use to fire off questions to any potential uh, buyers. So like uh, location, price, uh, motivation, you know, how soon are they trying to be in their home? Um, if they're working with an agent uh, and then you ask about like the mortgage side of it, like, are they renting right now? Do they own a home right now? How much are they comfortable paying per month? And then, you know, if, if they really, um, 
show lots of interest and you can tie it down for the appointment and hey let's sit down in my office or let's sit down over a zoom to talk some more about this home and then we can actually if you if you're not pre-approved yet then you know how much do you have allocated for a down payment you know what's your income what more or less what's your credit score right so you're basically qualifying somebody on the spot um, and then setting up the the next steps yeah I think that's extremely important, right? Is, is you're getting that information in a conversational manner, right? Where well, it doesn't sound like you're interrogating them, but you're just talking and you're slowly extracting all those, that information and kind of elaborating on those things. I think another important question guys, besides the LP mama and the, the DIC down payment income credit is just asking them what's important to them, right? I think when you ask someone like, hey, what's important to you in, you know, in the home that you buy, that's a great like, general question that gets the person thinking that like, Hey, this guy is actually cares about what's important to me. Right. Um, and it, it gets the conversation flowing. Um, so that they, you they can basically sell you on what they need, right? Like they're going to tell you what's important and then you can tailor your conversation once you kind of gain those points from them. So, uh, I would definitely ask what's important to them. Um, on the other side of it, right. Is how do you get to know them a little bit? right? So another good strategy is using the Ford. Do you guys know what Ford stands for when you're having the conversation? So Ford is like, um, it's an acronym for like family, occupation, um, recreation, I think, and then like dreams or something like that. I don't know if I'm butchering that, but it's basically you're asking them like the most basic questions about people. Like, oh, tell me about your family. Is this, you know, I see these two kids, are these your only two or, you know, and then let them talk, right? Um, everyone likes talking about their family, right? Um, occupation, right? What do you guys do for a living? You guys work nearby, get them talking, right? And then you can take that conversation somewhere else and you might find some similarities or, hey, yeah, my cousin works there also, you know, and then kind of talk about, you know, maybe what they do for fun or what some of their goals are. Right. What are you guys' goals, you know, when it comes to real estate this year? You know, that's the that's the D part, the dream part. And then the recreation, you know, is like, what do you guys do for fun? So these are kind of just general like talking points um, that you can use on any conversation. You can use that over the phone. You can use that in Zoom. You can use that in a live presentation. You can use that on an open house. But it's just the Ford acronym. So, yeah, those are the big ones you're going to want to remember is the LP Mama. If you just Google that, you'll see it. Ford, the Ford technique. Um, and then the DIC is down payment income credit, um, which is kind of the basics we use for finding out more about their finances. I think another Any thing other that I do um, is just talk about what their experience is in the market. What, what has been their experience? How is this their first open house they've been looking at? Um, what is important about the specific location that they're, that, why are they there? Um, and maybe also do some research about the neighborhood activity too. I know I brought up showing comps as well. Uh, show them that you know about the inventory coming in the area. Um, yeah. I think that's a good question. The, the one you said, uh, what's your experience, right? Like, hey, so what has your experience been like? Have you guys, you know, seen a bunch of homes? Have you made offers on homes? Because that will get them to tell you, like, if they're working with an agent, if they had a good experience, a bad experience, if they've been beat out, you know, by a bunch of other offers. And then you can use that information to tailor your conversation as well. Like if someone tells you, yeah, you know, you know, we've been looking around, we've made offers on four different properties, we've gotten outbid on every single one then I would tailor my conversation around strategies to help you get your offer accepted or maybe talk about properties that you know of that are coming up and there may be an off market opportunity, right? So you always wanna use what they say against them, not in a bad way, but <laughs> you wanna use that as ammunition, right? Um, and find a solution, that, right? Find a solution. Find for a solution, people. right? Pose a solution for whatever their pain point is. And that does require you to be a better listener, right? Uh, because how many times have you been in a sales situation 
or maybe you've been on the other side where someone is just blah, 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 throwing their freaking script at you and you're saying something and they're just completely disregarding what you're saying. And they're just want to like shove this script down your throat, right? Like the cell phone guys at the, at the mall or like the car dealers, right? The, the, the dealership guys, right? Um, you don't want to be that guy, right? Like if you're just like not listening at all and you're not uh, reaffirming what they're saying, right? The repeat and approve. Oh, you've been, you know, you, you got outbeat, you know, several times, man, I know how that feels. I, I totally feel for you guys. Just by you doing that right there is going to immediately get them to see you in a different perspective. Like, oh man, this guy is, this person's being sincere, or at least they hear us and they understand us, right? So I, I think it's, it's important that you listen closely and you more be the person asking the right questions and then go from there and kind of tailor, tailor the conversation. Any other advice guys on, on scripting or what to say or how to talk to people at these open houses? Would you want to uh, like kind of follow them around the house and kind of show them or would you want to just catch them at the end? Like, what are you, what are your thoughts? Okay. Okay. I wouldn't, um, um, I wouldn't follow people around. I mean, it also depends on the house, right? Like if you're just a regular home out here, that's 1500 square feet or 2000 square feet. If you're following someone, that's going to feel really weird because it's a small house, right? Now, if you're in a mansion, you might have to follow them a little bit so that you can at least be in the vicinity to, to answer questions. But if you're standing in the living room, there's really not much to see with a lot of these homes, right? The homes are not that big around here, you know? So I would, uh, I would, you know, don't be overly pushy. I would let them know, hey, go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna give you some privacy. Um, I'll be right here to check in with you guys after you've kind of seen the rest of the property, right? And then you always want to ask like, hey, do you have any questions about the property? What, you know, what, was there anything you liked or anything you didn't like? Or what do you think about the property? What do you think about the price? You know, that's, that's a really good way to kind of get some feedback from them as well. Um, the other reason that's important when you're asking people, what do you think about the property? Is that's good feedback that you can give your seller, right? Because let's say, Everyone knows that properties are selling fast, right? But we don't talk about the ones that are sitting on the market, right? There's ones that are sitting on the market too, right? Not that it's not as common, but there have been times when properties are sitting on the market or you have a unique property or it backs up to a freeway or it's on a busy road. And a lot of times the seller's expectations are, are different than what the market is telling us, right? So when you can go back to your seller and give them actual feedback from buyers who have walked into their home, that's going to be a lot easier, you know, when you have to ask for a price reduction or when you have to make an adjustment in the strategy, you know, it's, it's a lot easier when you have this data and this information to give back to them. You know, so I think that, I think that works both ways. It, it works as a way to build rapport with the buyer and it works as a way to take that feedback to your sellers and, and, and provide that service to your sellers that they've hired you, hired you for. I like that one, Enrique, when you're asking them, what do you think about the price? I think it's a great question because what I've noticed, you, you know, obviously I've done it for a while, but what I've noticed is a lot of buyers get discouraged. Like, oh, I can't get this one. It's out of my price range. Or this one's priced really low. You're going to get tons of offers. It's going to go well above. That's what's happening, right? So a lot of times they'll give you that information when you ask that question. And then, so, you know, you want to counter that back because again, we want to get as many, you know, we want to get as many offers we can on that particular property. So we don't want them to be discouraged that, you know, they're not going to be able to get it. So you got to encourage them like, Hey, listen, you know, if they're working with an agent, Hey, listen, you know, get with your agent, write an offer, you know, let's see if we can get you, get you in here, get, you know, let, let's see if you can compete. Right. And again, I think it's, it's important because I've been at open houses. They're like, Oh, we're not going to write because we feel like we not, we might not be able to get it. That may not be true, right? So I think that that's a great question to kind of, and then you can follow that back and give them some encouragement, either right or obviously you want to set that appointment so you can have them interview as the. Yeah, no, definitely. You always want to get people to write an offer if possible, right? Because that, that gets them 
moving forward, right? That gets them moving forward with the process. It allows you to now showcase your skills, right? Um, especially in the beginning when you first met them, right? And you're first building that relationship with them, even if you don't think it's going to be the winning offer. I think it's, it's a good exercise for people to, to, to write an offer. They need to see what this process is like, right? Um, because a lot of times, you know, especially this competitive market, when someone first writes an offer, they like, they don't know what to expect. They hear about it. They see it on the news. They see the, the articles on the internet. They know the market's hot, but they don't know what it is until they're actually in it. Right. So sometimes they may have this perception of the market. Um, you know, if it's one way or whatever, but once they're in it, then it's going to kind of get them, you'll be able to get them to adjust if they've already gone through that process. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It's really hard to convince someone who's not experienced buying a home to like come in way over asking non-contingent, right? It's hard to do that. It's easier to do that after they've lost three times, right? So the quicker you can get them to move forward, you know, with an offer and go through that process and walk them through it, the more knowledge they're going to gain, the more perspective they're going to gain, and then the more realistic they're going to become on what the actual market is doing. They become comfortable with the process as well, right? Because they've already yeah. done it. Yep. Getting that pen, pen to paper, getting the ink. Exactly. Pen to paper. That's the goal. All right, guys. This was actually uh, pretty good. I, I, this is a lot of uh, refreshing and, and some new ideas as well. Um, we're coming up on time. But I hope you guys got some nuggets on open houses. Um, I think anybody who's going to do an open house needs to watch this video. Right, so I'm gonna share this. It'll be up. It'll be up on YouTube after this, and then I'll put it out there, um, and then we'll, we'll just distribute this, guys. If you got some value out of this, you know, share it on your social, um, and take these ideas, guys, and 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 take these things and, and go apply them to your business. That's the biggest thing, right? We're this is all we're talking about theory, right? But it's all about now going and taking action, um, and just I think the biggest takeaway that I got today, and hopefully you guys did, is that to do to have a successful open house. You need to be prepared and you need to really put some effort into that open house and the open house starts way before the actual time that it starts, right? And it ends later than the time that it ends on the MLS, right? Like for you to go spend three, four, five hours of your Saturday or your Sunday when you could be out with your family or you could be doing something else, like if you're going to dedicate that time to this open house, you need to go all in on this open house so that you can get the most bang for your buck because time is valuable guys, right? That's, that's the one thing we can't, you know, change, right? We can't change time, but we can change what we do during that time. Right. You know, we can't get it back. So um, if you're going to choose to do open houses, guys, make sure they're like, you become the king or the queen of open houses, right? Like that should be it. Like I'm going to freaking smash this open house. I'm the king. I'm the queen. Anybody who walks into my open house, they're going to be freaking impressed with how this thing is set up, how much value I'm bringing to the table, my energy, my attitude, like it's all of the above, right? And that's where you're going to get the wins. That's where you're going to gain clients. That's where you're going to show value. And that's where you're going to have an open house be a, uh, one of the pillars of your business, right? That gives, that brings you leads and, and opportunity. So um, thank you guys. Thanks for, for joining today. Uh, let's make it a great week. If you guys need anything, reach out to me and we will see you next Wednesday. Same time, same channel. Let's go. Later, guys. Later. 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 Okay, hold on real quick. Okay. Hold on, let me stop the recording.